The Buzz, Australia's only live, interactive social media program on free-to-air TV, is proudly brought to you by Zetagrid, Australia's award-winning provider of on-demand IT infrastructure for businesses that want reliability, speed and flexibility. And welcome to The Buzz. Great to have your company. We are your very favourite beardy guys and uh, we've got a really pretty girl here as well. Not bearded Hello, at Candace. all. I shaved the beard for tonight. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> for anyone wondering what's going on behind me, that's uh, it's, it's lightsoverlapland.com. You can see it. It's uh, Aurora Borealis. Oh, the, Aurora the Northern Borealis. Lights, as we call them. So we found a very pretty video that you can check out online as well um, from Sweden, from anyone Sweden. wanting to know. So, yes, thank you very much to the peeps who dug that up for us. Speaking of all things Sweden... Yes. Yeah, you know Julian Assange is still apparently wanted over there for okay. you know, don't want to talk to him. Yeah. He don't care. Assange don't care. Assange is far too busy doing things like this. Ooh, we're all wired up now. We're all being fed lies. Not long till we get all the rats out. Once we turn on all the I love the fact that he can take the piss out of himself. I guess maybe it covers up for some of the controversy during the week for the WikiLeaks party in his preferences for some of these smaller, perhaps more extreme dodgy, parties. A bit dodgy, because as I understand it, their council got together, worked out how the preferences were going to flow, and then some of the candidates actually chose to go about it their own way instead. Yeah, and a lot of them are preferencing parties that you just wouldn't expect. If you were voting WikiLeaks, which up until that point I was kind of going, okay, it seems like a pseudo kind of Greens party, mm, mm. left party, and yet their second preference is the some, Christian some party. Some extreme the, conservative yeah, absolutely. nut jobs. No more people ever party, <laughs> stuff like that. So uh, maybe this helped cover that a little bit for the WikiLeaks party. On the screen at the moment you can actually see a little bit of coverage here as well from the Herald Sun, and uh, I think they think that he's, uh, he's done the wrong thing. Check out this photo here. How much more like a bogan could Julian Assange look? Well, I guess it is good fun that he's having a bit of a fun at himself. I'd like to see Tony Abbott maybe in the same sort of get-up. Maybe all of them doing a rendition of You're the Voice would be yes. awesome. Which one's the best? That's the one who's Prime Minister. I do need to point out, though, that that is not Julian Assange singing. That is someone else entirely. But I think he's a good sport for doing it. I really do. Mm. Now, uh, I've got another one here. I'll just bring this one up as well. Social media, apparently, according to newspapers... You remember newspapers? Those old-fashioned no, sort right. of... They did print yesterday's news on some paper. I and vaguely remember you, I used to have to use them to wipe my bum when mum ran out of toilet roll. That's, that's pretty much the extent of it. Anyway, one of those ancient old newspapers that's kind of made the transition to the web, the Australian Financial Review, right. uh, social media fails to fire up the election, they claim. How um, often have mm -hmm. we seen the claim, I guess, that social media is important, social media isn't important, and it seems to go to and fro? Well, there is a, use? A, a quote here. Analysis conducted by the Financial Review, by the Financial yeah. Review, uh, showed Labor has so far engaged more social media users than the Coalition, with Prime Minister Kevin Rudd and Finance Minister Penny Wong, its star performers, but the numbers are far too long to have a discernible impact. One thing what? I will... Sorry, go, you go ahead. Right. Would they be, you know, investing in social media? And some of them are putting quite a lot of time and effort into this. Would they be putting as much effort into it if they saw no value in it? Oh, I hear you. But one of the discussions, when you watch people on social media, politicians on social media, you tend to see uh, Joe Hockey will post something, people will come up saying, great job, people will come but up no saying, you douche. That's right, nobody goes, can you clarify that policy further? There's no discussion about mm. the policy or any mm. in-depth. There's either the, the fanboys or the people who are just trolling it. Well, because every attempt to have done that has been killed by the PR, you know, it's, you're just getting blank wall silence every time you're trying to engage with, you know, most that's true. politicians. So, so therefore, though, if that's the case, doesn't therefore that make the whole social media thing with politics 
least I valid. I, I am worried that Twitter in particular has become something of an echo chamber because you know you tend to follow people who tend to agree with your perspective on the world and so you're just hearing your own views reflected back at you yeah, all the time. Yeah, a lot of people won't use it as somewhere to pick up knowledge on stuff, I mm. guess, as a journalist might use it. They mm. tend to use it for just to hang out with people who like what they like and then just troll people who and they like. And there's nothing wrong with that. Well, no, I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that. But would you agree that politics in Australia is becoming something like Game of Thrones? Australia isn't growing up enough to elect women. Take a suppository of wisdom, your priest of this victim. The people are with me. Look at me knitting. Ah! Shot in the back! Again? Here's Kevin. Uh, back to commence the bloodshedding, the red wedding. With my new look, I'm ready. I'm taking over again. What do you say to that, Tony, my friend? You bloody rudderless. Time for my budgie smugglers. What about people smugglers? Labor's never tough as us. Well, I will say one thing for fake Tony Abbott. He can certainly pack out his budgie smugglers. And with that, over to you, Candice. <laughs> well, someone who could apparently pack out the, uh, the Batman cape is Ben Affleck. And with Warner Brothers announcing that he'll don the black cape for the upcoming Man of Steel uh, sequel. So he'll be playing Batman opposite Henry Cavill's dashing, dashing Superman. Um, well, social media didn't react all too well to it, with plenty of memes mocking the choice and the hashtag better Batman than Ben Affleck trending worldwide. So we'll have to see how this one goes. Um, Mashable spread the word about a new UK-based site called justdelete.me, so just delete me, uh, which offers a step-by-step -step guide to deleting accounts on social media and on retailers' websites, things like that. Some, such as Facebook and PayPal, are listed as pretty easy to be able to disconnect from, but the site offers a pretty grim warning to subscribers of sites such as Craigslist and Pinterest, saying that it is virtually impossible to detangle yourself from the web of these websites. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, Justin Bieber is a polarising figure in social media and in real life, with uh, you know a lot of the young ladies out there screaming and loving him to death. Let's see what some of the more mature members of our community think. Justin Bieber! Ha! <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. Oh, what a joke. Who voted on this? Are they booing him? Wow. Yeah, they're booing. <laughs> He sounded very defensive about, hey, I'm only, I'm only 19. Give me a break, I'm only 19, but I'm a true artist. Paul, I thought we'd make it, made a decision, an executive level decision on this show, not to talk about Justin Bieber any longer. Hold up, since when are you guys executive? <laughs> and why the... wasn't I brought in on this? <laughs> One of the why, would you want Bieber on the show? No, I just want to be an executive. Okay. One of the <laughs> big stories this week following on from Justin Bieber has been the Miley Cyrus Oh, dance. the twerking. The last mm -hmm. couple of days mm -hmm. it's been hitting the thing. I wonder though, was this just old people having a spat at kids musicians just using social media? It's funny because they're, I can't remember the guy's name now, but a couple of years ago a, a well-known pop star actually said, I guarantee to you within two years Miley Cyrus will be dancing on a pole. Wow. Yeah. What a prediction. I, people are just having a go at it. And when I watched the performance, I saw nothing that was different than what we were seeing Lady Gaga do or what we see Kesha do or what we see some of those other In fact, there was suitors. a really good post, I think it was on Dig this morning, what was highlighted by Dig anyway, showing that um, Miley Cyrus's performance at the MTV Awards really mirrored a very similar performance by Britney Spears a couple of years ago when uh, she yes. was in you know, the yeah. time yeah. of her career. Yeah, that's yeah. We just make a big deal about something, we hammer them. But It's a very good point, Paul, and that, that I wanted to go a little further on that. Why are we even talking about Miley Cyrus when so much terrible stuff is happening in the Middle East at Wait, the moment? That's right, where the UN is uh, preparing to draw up plans to march into, uh, into Syria. the Middle East. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a nice distraction. Maybe we'd much rather talk about that stuff because it's simple as opposed to, you know... Yeah, I know, but it's wrong, isn't it? It's again. wrong. It's wrong. We should, we, we should pay more attention to the serious stuff. Should we? Well, I don't, I don't know. know. Candace, I don't know. how much attention are you paying to what's going on in the Middle East at the moment? Um, the serious stuff is horrifying, yeah. Um, and I normally wouldn't pay as much attention to it as I am, but I'm not really sure what's going on, so I find myself a bit more drawn into yeah. it. Yeah, no, yeah. it's catastrophic over there at the moment. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay. Political facts. A very important thing. We're not necessarily getting much of them in the media at the moment. Everybody's making outrageous claims. Who is out there checking these facts, Paul? Well, we touched on this a few weeks ago when we talked about this 
birth of sites where they measure what they say against what the actual facts are. So I thought I'd touch in with PolitiFact today, which aligned itself with, was it Seven News or yeah, whatever? Yeah, one of the media outlets brought yeah. it up after a couple of days, a couple of days after it launched even. Yeah, that's so right. Was, they they you know, jumped right in on it. on it. I believe the ABC has one and there's a, a couple of others as well. But I thought I'd have a quick look at uh, PolitiFact. The good thing is, is you can have a look at these and let's just say, for instance, you do feel it will be biased by whoever owns it. So. Uh, Tanya Plibersek says when Abbott was health minister, there was a shortage of GPs because he put a, gap, uh, a cap rather on GP training places. False. Uh, the Liberal Party confirmed it will cut 20,000 jobs by Kate Lundy. It says it's false. But how? How are they checking these facts and who is checking these facts? Okay. Is it, is it Labor leaning? Is it Liberal leaning? Well, the good thing is, is whether the site has a bias or not, you can click on one of these. For instance, the Coalition's 22 billion paid parental leave scheme costs more than the Commonwealth spends on childcare and the NBN. It says this is half true. You can have a look at the reasoning behind it and it will give you a, a written up article, which I guess you could presume would be to some degree, maybe, not saying it is, but biased by those who wrote it. But what it does have down the bottom of the page uh, when it loads, it's not going to actually show it here now, it did in rehearsal, is links to uh, things like budget forms, uh, childcare reviews, uh, speeches spoken by both the opposition and the government. So you can have a look at the facts and you can chase down the facts uh, and where they got the facts from uh, in regards to this, including interviews. Uh, so that helps. I think. You see the opportunity to make up your own mind somewhat as well, yeah. presenting the raw data there for you what well, they like used. Uh, Wikipedia. People say Wikipedia is no good, you can't trust it. But what Wikipedia has down the bottom is, is citations. So you can then go and have a look yourself, which is probably worth doing, especially if there's a lot of things you don't really understand and would like to follow further. Mm. Good mm. website. I like that. Politifact.com. Yep, that's it. Worth checking out. .com.au. Mm. All right. Uh, Snowden, back in the news. And uh, I tell you what, uh, Candace. <laughs> Forgot me already. I can't what? believe I've forgotten your name. You see, you're too far away. We, we, we just forget that you're there sometimes. We do not. My green we screen. do not. I don't believe it. The there are the new revelations thanks to uh, our friend Snowden. Absolutely. Edward Snowden continues to cause a little bit of, uh, you know, headaches for the people in the US and the, and the security agencies in the US with the German media outlet publishing details, which they say come from him, um, details of spy activities by the USA's national security agency, that's the NSA that we've been referring to. Among the institutions allegedly spied upon include the uh, European Union and the United Nations. So this really does go all the way to the top and could be quite damning if proved to be correct. Um, another one I've got for you, as we know, Twitter has been around for obviously quite a while now and join the conversation with this here, hashtag the buzz. Um, but many companies are now looking to jump on board the whole Twitter social media trend here, but not all of them are actually looking at the medium before they do so. So unfortunately, it looks like they're not, they've not put enough effort into, you know, strategizing before they just sort of dive into it. And this may have been the reason why Twitter on its blog this week curiously posted almost a hashtags 101 style post to tell people the do's and don'ts of hashtags. So I thought we were well beyond that. What do you guys reckon? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I need a, uh, a page to tell me how to do hashtags. I mean, aren't hashtags kind of intuitive? Well, I think, and they're quite arbitrary as well. You know, what you and I agree on for a hashtag for something we're talking about might be different than somebody else, but that could depend on the angle we're coming at a particular thing And as well. we saw with the beginning of the, of the federal election that everybody was coming up with their own, their own election hashtags. Yeah. I don't know what we've eventually landed on, but I think over it's not time... It's consistent anyway. It's yeah, well, consistent. over time, people sort of tend they to narrow down, narrow yeah, down, down they at are. the same point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, maybe it helps for people who aren't quite sure where to start, but I think for most who are using it regularly, they kind of know how it Yeah, works. kind of figure it out. Anyway, the internet is such a huge influence on our lives and take that Australian Financial Review. What would it be like if we didn't have it for a day? Oh, you should check us into the park. Good idea. We are at the park with Tom Armstrong! Hashtag TGIF, hashtag ready for the weekend, hashtag wine o'clock, hashtag come at me bro! Okay, so we've got to go from Canberra to Sydney to see Tom's dance recital. How can we get there and how far is it? It's only a centimetre away. Oh man, we'll get there in no time. Yes. Do you know the directions? <laughs> 